You could have had a vociferous what we advocate. Are establishing as a Pedro, uh, we're doing the Ubuntu Canary. Pe- 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 which Pedro. is like the word Canary, but with more Pedro. <laughs> And welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly. The show covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Vin, that's Jordan, that's Pedro, and together with you, Shot Realm Dynamic, helping us form cocaine, Voltron. What's up? What's new? I'm super excited. <laughs> zoom, zoom. <laughs> Positively rumbling with excitement. That oh, no. Re- fart box re- mufflers, re- baby. Fart box and mufflers. Re- so, what am I excited about? Steam. Beta. We've been talking about it for a couple of weeks. And Pedro, you've experienced some uh, scrolling issues. Jordan, you experienced some scrolling issues with it, I think. Did some you try? Light, light scrolling issues. Mine were severe. Mine were severe on NVIDIA, where it would just freeze and like one thread would be hung at like 98%. I'm like, yeah, fine, I'm done. Pedro said it cleared up on um, Wayland AMD, mm-hmm. which is good. The latest one works like a charm. I just decided to try it Thursday. Scrolling, scrolling, no problem. Going into everything. Great. I'm like, finally. So I was very excited earlier this week when I put in the show notes. I'm like, you could finally use the beta if you have a NVIDIA and you're running on X. Then last night, we finished Trackmania. And I opened up a messenger to send uh, the winner's uh, free game. Double click to open up a window. Crashes Steam. Mm. Is that repeat? Yes, it's repeatable. I did it three more times in a row. <laughs> huh. Oh. Moral of that story is I'm back on stable. How about you, Jordan? I have my own Steam related story. It's been a while since I got a hardware survey, and this week I got two. I got one on the Steam Deck, and I got one on the, the PC box. And it took me a second to figure out how to actually get it to show up on 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 the steam deck because it's like hey would you like to take the new hardware survey and i'm like yes and i press on the thing and it's nothing happens and you gotta go into the, the announcements and then it's like oh it pops up there now neat that's not how it used to work but now i know <laughs> um yeah they, they also the the new ui has their own, has a new um survey uh, dialogue as well so i guess i was just the lucky participant who got to uh submit my crap that's that's about as exciting as my week gets <laughs> Doesn't that kind of boil down to like Valve knows that you're playing games on your Steam Deck? Yeah, no, like Val- Valve knows that I've given them a bunch of money already. Let's just like mm-hmm. have that reported into the survey. Okay, <laughs> thanks. All right, and uh, I guess that's it. Pedro didn't put anything down, so he doesn't have anything going on this week. That's a damn shame. Pretty much, no. Uh, like I, our I horse. Did. Oh no, he's gonna <laughs> he's gonna try to sneak something in. No, it's just I finally finished the Nori's new build. That was a. Uh, 500 pounds over the course of uh, six months, but it's a proper computer now, so it, it's nice. Got a 5600G and a 6600, so it it is proper. <laughs> now she can play all her sexy Skyrim mods mm-hmm. at 60 FPS without uh, dropping to like 30 when the, she turns now, around. <laughs> I got I gotta ask: Does she have like the lizard husband, and did she name it Pedro? Uh, no, she has a cat husband from one of the custom uh, follower mods. Is it, now, now <laughs> same, sec, same follow-up question. <laughs> no, it's called Inigo. It's a fairly uh, popular mod. Yeah. <laughs> okay, 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 so you're not... You're, no, no, no Skyrim Pedro no, I, I, I don't here. belong in her fantasies, just her reality. Listen, Jordan, Kajit has wares. <laughs> like our horse. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, there, there, there's something... There's some pussy joke there. I don't know. <laughs> It's the Steam! Speaking of cats, uh, we got the first game we're talking about. We got some, we're starting off with uh, new games this week. Property damage. Did you guys play Rampage back in the day where you like climb up on the buildings and you like smash them and you get points? Well, this is that, but with more fursuits. You are now a bunch of radioactive furries who get to walk around a giant city and blow it the fuck up. And, you know, I really, I have very fond memories of playing, like, Xbox Rampage, uh, PS2 Rampage, uh, smoking a lot of weed as a child. So, like, some, I see this, and it makes me happy on the inside. But then I scroll down, and uh, if you're watching the video version, you'll see Rampage Solo or Local Co-op, and then my heart sank. Because there's no online multiplayer for this. 
To which I say, then what's the point of this game? It's uh, $4.99. I yeah. guess. It's $4.99 for Furry Godzilla. Furzilla. Hey, man, this game is custom <laughs> tailored for disgruntled collegiate mascots. Uh, at at $4.99, though, uh, we were talking in the pre show before we went live. Not even, no, we were live. We just didn't start recorded. It, yeah, at $4.99, I'm like, absolutely, I'll pick this up and we can play it in the after show. And no, we can't. Boo. Boo earns. But it's, which is unfortunate because this seems like this would be like perfect for online play. Right? I mean, I want to play as the building. Yeah. <laughs> the asymmetric multiplayer yeah. possibilities alone. <laughs> I, I, I love rigid, sturdy gameplay. So this is like low key telling you local co ops going to require uh, one or more game controllers. That means that you cannot play two players on one keyboard. No. Ah, I, no to be fair, no, most no, USB no keyboards have like a 10 key limit for rollover. So. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm just a little disappointed. I mean, if it was like 9.99 and it had multiplayer, I'd be all over. Yeah, that and and that that's kind of it, right? Like, yeah, the 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 real value add here would be the multiplayer, which uh, does not have. Um, uh, I guess. Well, moving on to the next game, we got to talk about Era Exordium Obliterate. It's a 2D action adventure game in a diesel punk setting with Sumerian slash Akkadian mythology. Whatever that means, you're going to have to fight Enkidu and a bull of heaven and search for immortality or something. I don't know. What, what, <laughs> what, whatever the whatever those Sumerians are up to. Uh, but I don't know. Looking at it, it reminds me a bit of like Dex as it's like a side scrolling mm-hmm. RPG slash slash explorer shooter. And like, yeah, diesel punk Dex seems like a cool idea. And I really do like the art style. Like the pixel art is very well done. It uh, looks very good. Uh, I was looking, the thing that kind of caught my attention once the uh, early access is done, I will absolutely have to try it. The minimum requirements are not the usual ones. It specifically lists an Intel Core 2 Duo E7500 or an AMD Athlon 64X2. It's like, okay. Do you, do, do you have those? <laughs> you you have a bunch of old crap so like i have can, can, uh, uh on the table back there i have a uh, motherboard with an athlon x3 <laughs> the so if you turn, tri-core so, one so if you if you turn off one core I'm sorry in the what BIOS. you just didn't reach over on your desk and get your athlon x2 i mean no i have an athlon x3 over there <laughs> oh, okay i think i still have my six core thuban it is somewhere some i think it's in that <laughs> cereal box somewhere actually uh the amd athlon 64 x2 dual core processor 5600 plus which is a rare one to find but if you do run across it uh this game will uh, definitely run on that night i like the look of it i like the aesthetic i like the pixel art i don't know how i like the movement of the character like when i was watching the video i immediately went down to take a look at the uh, user defined tags and like where's the souls like it's more, um, uh, what am I thinking of? Uh, like Metro- Metroid-y? It, yeah, it, it's more the Symphony of the Night than, um, Salt and Sanctuary, because Salt and Sanctuary, that was 2D Dark Souls, absolutely. But this one is more Symphony of the Night-ish. Yeah, this one, this, this one seems to be a little bit more, like, exploration, like, action-adventure focused mm-hmm. than, like, pure action. Mm. But I mean... Uh, you know, it's got the Pedro Mateus approval for like color scheme. <laughs> yes, it's uh, desaturated. <laughs> it is. It is an early access though. They do have a demo. Uh, you can pick it up for about twenty five bucks. It's a little pricey, so definitely check out that demo first yeah. if you are interested. In so it. maybe Brown's got you down that dystopian wasteland. We need bright and shiny, and the easiest way to do that is Polybridge Three. It's back. Ah, oh, why do I like these games? I don't know. I don't we're know. All, we're all suckers for them. They're like little little hints of crack. This is a, yet another exciting installment of Wigglebridge. Fuck. Ah, oh, damn it. No. And it all falls apart. <laughs> or alternatively, <laughs> what? Fuck no. Amazing. I made it. Well, there's the <laughs> I what? I made it fuck, to the end. I don't dot, know how, dot, but dot, I did. Dot, 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 dot. Huh. <laughs> yeah. That worked. I, that, that shouldn't have worked. I, I put this together as a, as a laugh. Why, why did this work? Look at this. Look at this. I mean, yeah. it, it's a little bit unhinged, man. 100 new levels and uh, something involving jumps like we saw in the trailer. Also, there's a sandbox mode, so you can uh, make little challenges and levels. <sighs> Do no, you think that it needs, looks... You think it needs more portals? <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> Do you think there's... 
How far did they take that? How far did they take the bridge constructors? Mm-hmm. There are like different themes. Is there like Devil May uh, Bridge? <laughs> near near Bridge Armada. Was... <laughs> <laughs> I'd play that. Become this bridge. Bridge Fighter 7. <laughs> Uh, this one, I, w- I was just looking at the uh, the examples that they have on the trailer of the, the different kinds of bridges and the fuckiness that you can get around to. Well, that goes you places. Have, you have to like make the splitty bridges too. Like, oh god, yeah. that's that's like a, that's like extra level of fucky. Yeah, we're 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 all suckers for like physics puzzlers here. So like, mm-hmm. I think if, if if you can if you can give us some good head scratchers that make us go, boy, I think we'll be happy. Oh man, this oh, is Ubuntu ten. Vulcan. Huh. 10 plus <laughs> do, do, does Ubuntu 10 have Vulcan support I don't know no <laughs> I mean I, you could I, I, probably get it to work but yeah getting Vulcan up no, and no, running I, on Ubuntu 10 04 <laughs> no 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 it's it's Ubuntu 10 service pack 3 <laughs> don't get my ideas man uh what do you think about the internet like flipping out about the uh, all snaps on Ubuntu the immutable uh oops all snap <laughs> Snap Ubuntu. I mean, that was inevitable given uh, Silver Blue and uh, Kinoita are a thing. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm not personally going to use it. So, no, I'm not, not even remotely curious. Maybe I need to do the thing um, like I did with Silver Blue and like do a live install and see how long Maybe. it takes to get Steam Oven running. What, what, uh, Pedro, what if Canonical paid you to use it, though? Oh, in a minute. <laughs> yeah, if they use paid it me to use it, it, I'd use it. Yeah, he would I, show up with his Ubuntu shirt. I never shirt. said I wasn't the shill. <laughs> I'm, 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 no, I'm, I'm just saying you could, you could. I'm just saying canonical. You could have had a vociferous what advocate. What we are establishing is a Pedro. Uh, we're doing the Ubuntu Canary, P- 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 which Pedro. is like the word Canary, but with more Pedro. Yeah. Also, now you got to scramble and like get a bunch of Ubuntu swag for next week. We also have to deprive them of oxygen. <laughs> I mean, I probably wouldn't mind the oxygen deprivation. That would make me less aware of what I was doing. So, yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, are you a big fan of Minecraft? Hmm? Maybe. What about Fortnite? Fortnite? <laughs> Ooh. We might have the game for you. Uh, Elteria? El- yeah, yeah. El- Elteria, Elteria, I guess. Adventure Zone, man. I don't know. I don't know. So I'm looking at this, and this is like straight up, we're looking at, you look at that, that's Minecraft, right? Put some blown out color schemes. Uh, yeah, you guys, it's, it's it Minecraft has with some the, Fortnite uh, people. Yeah, Fortnite. Yeah, and some anachronistic characters standing on those voxels. <sighs> well, when I see this screenshot, I'm like, that just straight up looks like a... Uh, that just looks like World of Warcraft or like Final Fantasy. <laughs> to me, 11? of a certain age, that character <laughs> looks like some old Unreal models, like how they clash with... The existing voxelized environment. Mm-hmm. I wasn't mean, like that the that, wasn't that the lady on like the ATI graphics box? Like, look at this guy. Like, that's even like an Unreal Sword, man. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like the sapphire cards with the <laughs> weird three D modeled person. Yeah, yeah. Like the the redhead chick. I think she's like specifically <laughs> the lady from like the ATI cards. She's like fighting a lizard man or something. You you know the ones. It's yeah. kind of <laughs> jarring. Oh, yeah, what? if you really want to know what uh, the practical uh, implications of an anachronism are, just go look at that trailer. <laughs> so, M- MMO co-op planned release date June 2023, and of course, uh, go check out their Discord. Of course, yeah. So I, I was I was reading into the description. Apparently, the thing that differentiates this from Minecraft is tiny blocks. The blocks are tinier, so you can have finer grain details, which means that it's going to run worse. I hope this thing is multi-threaded to high hell and back, because like <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna require some some resource utilization. A little bit. It's going to be an MMO. It's already going to be uh, hitting the processor like it owes it some money. So. So what do you think it's going to be? Do you think we're going to get a free-to-play MMO, or they're going to be like, no, 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 this is you know twenty bucks, and also give us some money, or is it going to be twenty bucks and like give us some money for some pretties, cosmetic? I think probably, I probably, probably the latter. Or, or is this going to N- be NFTs? like the uh, game that was on um, from the Double Fine thing? Better remember, oh, Crazy Justice. Uh, yes, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just totally not Fortnite. You guys disappear. <laughs> How many years now has that game been gone? Like, and it's still. I completely forgot about that. 
Man, like we play, were, We played it. We tried. We tried to get in, and then it uh-huh. crashed. One of them guys, <laughs> uh, like whatever the guy is who does the death of a game needs. I, I want to know the history. Like, what happened there, man? What happened there? So, what else? Uh, it's it's not Thunder Day. No, but it is going to be Thunder Day, supposedly on June 9th. We'll see. Well, <laughs> I do have to uh, send out big kudos to the dev, which completely unprovoked decided to send us some keys on Curator Connect. Thank you very much. Is that what that was? Uh, Newgrounds.com. Yes. <laughs> it absolutely looks like a, a Flash game from Newgrounds. Uh, but it is a, a twin stick shooter, the likes of uh, Nuclear Throne uh, people, or Enter the Gungeon. Uh, it's probably Nuclear Throne's the closest one. Uh, it is, yeah. It, is, that, is that the Grain Grumps art style? Well, Close enough? Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's uh, Aaron Hansen making the uh, <laughs> the character sprites, yeah. but it, it, it looks very similar to that. And no, no word on price just yet. Uh, we know the uh, release date and that it will have a Steam uh, Linux uh, version on Steam. So I look forward to yeah, it. Yeah, I was absolutely. Like, just like looking, I was like, oh, is it online so we can get in trouble and play in the after shows? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, <boo. laughs> Forever alone mode. Forever alone. Yeah. You Definitely. get to play with your twin sticks. It'll be yourself. something to check out. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is finally starting to happen. This is something I. I slow but steady progress i think we're going to see more and more of or at least i hope are games that are like hey we rendered a linux with proton but you know what we can get a little better performance on deck if we end up optimizing it making a, making a linux build of the yeah game. and and uh with this game especially because it is based off of a game that already has a linux version was a lot easier this is entropy aka or entropy zero aka half-life 2 are we the baddies edition <laughs> and yeah they have um this this is a game where you play as like combine soldiers it adds some like squad management elements to the half-life 2 gunplay and you're trying to track down some doctor and you know be a jack plays as a uh, combine soldiers in the black suits that just fuck you up like ninjas no, I think you just you just play as like the stormtrooper dudes, oh. but um, but yeah, they added Civil Steam Deck support. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's running natively on the deck now, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, and like 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 I said, uh, they were able to do this because you know F Life Two is um, is already natively supported under Linux. This is basically just a total conversion mod, so making sure that it runs uh, thusly, and it's pretty good. Pedro, is this the uh, correct way to play it on the uh, Steam Deck? <laughs> You can absolutely just have a dual shock with the blue teeth on the Steam Deck, but uh, the first time that I actually tried willingly to play Half Life Two with a controller was for the Alpaca review, and I can say yes, Half Life Two works wonderfully with a controller. So they probably didn't have to do much for it to work properly. So no, that was like good. This. It's very good to see. To get remind everybody, like, hey man, uh, you're gonna have to make sure that you select it to uh, make sure it starts with uh, the uh, Steam, Steam Linux, Linux runtime, run yeah, instead <laughs> of Proton. So, hmm. yeah, good to see. And it's the cheapest free, so you can just uh, install it directly from Steam. You need to install yep. the uh, the uh, Half Life SDK, and you're good to go. Pretty decent. Uh, one last bit before we get out of here, plushies, and it is the very last bit, uh, supposedly for Skate Burb. Yes. The um, a ska- uh, skating uh, video game where you were a burb and you could put headsets and other bits of customization on said burb is now officially done, according to the developer. Uh, they were very much not aware uh, of just how popular it was going to be, but I think everyone will agree that when they first released that GIF that just showed the burb doing some uh, tricks on the skateboard, everyone kind of wanted to play it. Uh, And we threw chairs at it. I was the most positive one, as usual. Uh, (laughs) But it is, yeah, it's uh, the end of the proverbial era. Uh, No mention if they're doing a second one. Uh, They're still very, very busy trying to get the, uh, like, the plushies and everything else sent out to people. So we'll see. It was an interesting game. Um, I, I had a lot. Uh, one of the things that's been added in this latest version is uh, selfie stick mode, because mm-hmm. that is the thing that birds do when they're skateboarding. I want to know where is the um, fisheye camera rendering 
shader. Ah, yeah, for the 90s skate videos. Yeah, you, you can't have a 90s skate video without fisheye, period. Like, that doesn't like exist. The, the, needs the scan lines, too, right? Scan like, lines, yeah. and you need to make sure it's, like, you know, that far off the ground, like, yeah. <laughs> really herky-jerk. <laughs> but I think, like, a lot of people, when I first picked up the game, I was expecting Tony Hawk arcade. T Tiny Hawk, yeah. Yeah, and just mm -hmm. rock and roll for the control scheme, but they decided to go, and they've leaned into it, like, the sim-like for EA style yeah, skateboarding controls. Skates. Skate that, was the game that did that. That nobody liked. That killed the skateboarding <laughs> game. <laughs> it was Genre, the, I guess. Very, very unfortunate I'm I'm in the same boat. But yeah, the, the last update, though, is a, apparently their biggest level yet. They have a bunch of the little challenges that you gotta do. So... I mean, what 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 are they what are they charging for it now? Twenty five ninety nine. You get a decent amount of content if that's if you're into like sim skaters. Yeah, you can get some decent uh, entertainment out of it. But I guess that's it. They haven't they didn't do anything in terms of like user generated content, did they? There's no like workshop. Uh, I don't know. There was a level editor in game, but that was about it. <laughs> uh, I'm looking at some of the other games that they have, like Spartan Fist. Yes, that is. So, uh, and yeah, according to Scott in uh, Discord, uh, developer, uh, she's not making a sports game next, but it will be with burbs. Uh, so she says on Mastodon, look forward to it. More burbs, absolutely. <laughs> Burb, I don't know. Just don't go with the uh, EA sim controls. <laughs> it, 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 it's it's Dark Souls, but you're playing with it as a duck. So it's Dark Souls. <laughs> quack quack. I'll play Bird Souls. I'm not even joking. I'll play Bird Souls. I I don't know. This looks kind of fun, man. This got it, I think. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rock him, sock him, for, for, for bloody pixels. Beat him up. Yeah. Right? Okay. Oh, that's geez. Nice. Okay, that's the bundle. That's like 44 bucks. <laughs> that's a bit much. Cool. All right. Yeah. Well, that's going to do it for us. Coming up next, NVIDIA has some new drivers. And no watching with Netflix via Heroic <laughs> Games Launcher, because this is a thing we can't do still. Oh... Any tiny little bit of news it's coming your way? Yes, uh, but it's so tiny, in fact, that the preceding um, shilling sections will probably <laughs> be just as long, if not longer. Jordan, Pedro, can you your, make it happen? <laughs> what, it depends yeah. on, on your thoughts on uh, yellow polka dots and swimwear. I mean, they're, they're, it's fine. You, you can wear yellow polka dots. That this guy says the P, yes. Yeah, if, if, <laughs> if, you, if you got an itsy bitsy teeny weeny yellow polka dot bikini, you can head on over to <laughs> patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast and tell us about it. Join our uh, Patreon. Get access to I, our Discord. Listen, man, I will, I will get over there in a minute. I got to check, see if a URL is available. Or a itsy bitsy <laughs> teeny weeny <laughs> yellow polka dot bikini dot com. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, Patreon, it's a great thing. It lets you support independent artists and creators like us. You can get into our Discord channel where we're here the other six days of the weeks. Um, we do uh, we do the pre-pre super shows in, uh, in our in our Discord if you uh, get into there. by uh, so You can also get in by subbing to us at twitch.tv slash Linux Gamecast. But yeah, you can listen to our production meeting slash hour where we talk about stuff randomly tangentially related to Linux gaming. Uh that starts at 7.30 in Discord. If you want to listen to that live, you get a RSS feed for that if you are a Patreon. Um, we got game streams as well. I think I'm, we're, we're, we're going to keep on doing our mellow for like another week. How while, did that while, go? I, you could watch me snatch defeat from the Jaws victory. I fucking won, except <laughs> for I hit, I meant to target the king with a spell and I misclicked and... <laughs> <laughs> I I I fucking I'm just saying. All right, that's, I misclicked and I killed myself and I gave Patrick the win and I was so mad. If you if you just want to see me just like lose lose like a hundred points off my sanity score, you can you can watch the vod of last week's stream. But yeah, we're gonna do it again and maybe do some more stuff afterwards. Then you're doing Trackmania on Tuesdays and Fridays. Tuesdays and Thursdays, baby. Vroom vroom. Uh, Fridays, yeah, sure. not uh, Thursdays. <laughs> first days nope, doing days. it on thursdays now we're, we're doing uh, a armello uh, uh, it's yeah, a hostile no, takeover no 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 no. The, the top half of the screen is armello the bottom half of the screen is track mania this, this is just baby steps and like slowly converting um like game cast into all track mania content <laughs> all track mania, all, yeah we're, uh, we're, we're, yes, we're doing the primary it like one, one, one pixel track mania channel on twitch yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Indeed. Uh, so yeah, jo- join up if you want to check that stuff out. We got a store as well, store at linuxgamecast.com. You can cover yourself in filthy, well, I guess this stuff is clean when you buy it. When you wear it, it becomes filthy. Linux Gamecast merch, we got hoodies, we got tote bags, stickers, coffee cups, all that good stuff. We got Wish Zones as well. If you head on over to linuxgamecast.com, put your mouse over the support button. I have one, Ven has one, Jill has one, Pedro has one, and you can buy us stuff off of our wish lists that we Bad want idea. or need. Yeah, and then you can send us little notes that we have to read on the air. Really Speaking bad idea. Of, uh, Kai Jore, our latest Patreon, attempted to do mm-hmm. that last week and failed and sent us some hate mail. But now he's now he's in the Patreon. He's in our Discord, hanging out with us again. It's good stuff. Also, want to thank Kai. Basil for our uh, forty-one month resub. Yes, that's yeah. one of and- the longest stretches on Twitch. <laughs> but for us, <laughs> forty-one months. That's uh, a lot of months. Yeah, thank you. Yep. That's <laughs> probably <laughs> more than a year. There is one more secret about the wish zones is that what? if you buy a thing off of Venz. Oh, God damn it. He, he, he puts your name on, on, I did. on the whiteboard. I got it up there. Look. <laughs> yep. See? Hey, and there he is. I had there to do is. that like three fuck mothering times too because I forgot that the liquid chalk like runs. So uh, I put it up the mm-hmm. first time and I stepped back and I'm like, that's kind of straight. That looks good. I went, did some stuff, come back and it was like all disease looking. I'm like, I fucked up, man. All right, I'm getting old. And I erased it. I did it again left came back and it was coming down and it was all fucked up oh in the process of erasing it i was like wait a minute oh it's running <laughs> so then i just cleaned up the parts where it was running I felt really smart about myself yep and stayed away from any <laughs> cheetos that evening because i clearly would have stabbed myself in the eye attempting to adjust them <laughs> thank you for your uh continue support we get to do what we do uh complete unhinged nightmare fuel each and every week and a bunch of other fun stuff and occasionally occasionally i break out some educational shit on you you know just to catch people out of left field fun time had by some now we haven't had an update I, i've been wondering it's been a minute you know f- to a point to where there's a joke that time for some driver news start off the news segment yeah <laughs> a long time ago, that's all it ever was. <laughs> I mean, NVIDIA was like just throwing them out. Like, you know, if like the if that was in drivers, that would be NVIDIA, man. Just like pouring we, them out. We were, also, we were also covering Mesa Matrix back when like in the pre-Vulcan mm-hmm. times when it's like, oh man, this open source dri- OpenGL driver is getting close to being feature complete. Mm-hmm. Now we, we have better alternatives. We have the new beta drivers, 353-4302, clocking in at 300 and. 30 megabytes now. Oh, geez. Uh, what do we get in this? A couple of things, a couple of things. Uh, mice type. This your page, NVIDIA. Come on. Come on. Change log. <laughs> Here's the it's thing. It's better um, story than AMD, though. Let's be real. I went ahead, installed them on kernel 6.0 because I got to run that for some other stuff. It's not a real big fan of GameScope, which means it didn't run um, with Trackmania 2020. I tried to start that up. And it just kind of aired out, went to a blank screen. I'm like, oh no, can I not use GameScope? And it kind of worked. And I just ended up reverting. But a couple of things in this. Something that you typically don't see, but NVIDIA has always been good about. You give them credit where credit's due. They have game-independent Linux desktop games. They will make fixes in their driver stack for. And this one has performance improvements for Minecraft, the real Minecraft, the Java edition, on 3,000 GPUs, which, yes, this is good. But also, the fuck can you tell? Like, I mean, on a 3000 GPU, do they make a 3000 GPU that cannot run Minecraft at a bazillion FPS? I think, I think it's like the, the, a lot of the lighting mods have like some pretty heavy GPU utilization. That was what I remember my roommate's computer was like being hit to a crawl with when he was doing like the big Minecraft modding thing. Mm. There's a lot of, a lot of like texture and, and lighting stuff that can really, really hammer the GPU, especially because you only got one thread. So, uh, yeah, uh, but the other the other thing they added uh, better support for is uh, Wayland on Prime systems that have an AMD integrated GPU and an NVIDIA dedicated GPU, which I think is actually going to be like a super common configuration as time goes on, right? Mm-hmm. People are picking up uh, like APUs because it's a good all-in-one system uh, for just like getting your foot in the door to play some video games. But you know, where you're two in, you're like, hey, I can't play all the good stuff at 1080p medium anymore. I need to buy a new video card. Looks like NVIDIA, like your your best bet is to get like a used 3060. So you pop that in your system. And yeah, if you wanna, if you wanna like have prime offloading, if you wanna use all of the display outputs on your system, you're gonna need something like this to do, uh, to do the uh, render offloading. Right. It's good to see. And good news, everybody. They've added support for suspend and resume when you're using that uh, hippie GSP firmware. 
Yeah. That's Which yes. is uh, it, it, it's one of those things that never changes. Sleep and resume are always an issue. <laughs> Dude, we've come so far, like sleep, resume, hibernate to the point where like I to this day do not use them, even though I know mm-hmm. they work now. But for so many like decade plus, like that was just a good way to do you want to fight with a system to try to get back in a usable state? Put it in hibernation. <laughs> the, the steam the steam deck has really been like leaps and bounds in terms of hibernation of just like that, that's the biggest problems. step forward yeah. yeah the games being able to just put the steam deck to sleep with the game running wake it up the game is still running yeah it it, it, it has come like a country mile it's whatever it's man i got plenty of games on steam that stay running in the background even though i Got out of the game. C- C- Cookie clicker. Yeah. <laughs> Gamescope does that a lot, where you quit the game and Gamescope stays running. It's like, can you If you, you want to play that at home, quit? launch any Ubisoft title with the Ubisoft <laughs> launcher, because there's a 9 out of 13% chance, like, at there, the end there's of some... the day, you're going to mouse up, see your bar, and see the Ubisoft. It's like, yeah, I've been here the whole time. <laughs> yeah, because there's, like, there's always some, like, hidden fucking window that it keeps, and it's like, yeah, yeah G- Gamescope's like, yeah, no, there, there's a window here. I need to, like, stay yeah. alive, right? <sighs> Ubisoft. Okay, so maybe you want uh, to get all of your DLCs for the games you got for free from the Epic Store, uh, but Heroic wouldn't let you do it. Once you downloaded the game, you downloaded everything, and you couldn't pick and choose which ones you uh, installed. They fixed that. Yeah, new version Yay. of uh, Heroic Games Launcher, version 280 Nico Robin is available for download now. They uh, made quite a bit of progress in allowing other games to be launched. Uh, from the launcher not just GOG and Epic ones they, <laughs> you can add browser based games and other browser based applications which it seems to be running natively in the launcher itself which if you look at what it's built with on GitHub you'll see it's a bunch of JavaScript, HTML and other web facing languages one thing about which, that though they're not shipping. It doesn't look like they're shipping the Widevine uh, codex yet. So no Netflix for you. Yeah, if you, they if, specifically if, if you point out any, like uh, no D- Netflix. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, yeah I, uh, I say this each and every time. Put some screenshots on your GitHub page. <laughs> I I'm I'm just thankful now that like when you download stuff off GOG, it'll actually sh- just show the size of the thing that you're downloading. Mm-hmm. That's that's useful to know if you need to like clear some space out on your on your hard drive. Um, no, I'm, it's I mean it is, but like I don't have any games. I I think it's more ap- applicable. Like how many like Linux titles or just titles in general you have at GOG more than you think because we used to do the uh, GOG Connect, mm-hmm. and every now and then you get a free game on GOG, but. Like, I don't care enough about those games to set up a a launcher. Plus, I'm still grumpy at GOG for not releasing whatever their attempt at a Galaxy. Galaxy. Yeah. Which is still the the... most requested one uh, on their uh, tracker, and they just don't want to do it. But I want you to think about this. Here's what I want you to do, GOG. I want you to create the GOG deck, the retro deck. It runs Windows 3.11 and DOS. And it plays all your Atari, good old games. It's it's the VCS, but like it's it's the GOG CS. Atari it's got wood paneling. Don't listen to Jordan. Focus on VR <laughs> and the metaverse. <laughs> and and hotels. Yes. Focus on the hotels. Yeah. <laughs> the VR hotels. Did you see that people were kind of upset that like Disney's like man people aren't uh, flocking to this six six thousand dollar a night Disney Star Wars hotel? Yeah, where where you where you get to stay in a windowless room. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> shock <laughs> shock and awe risk you know, five it, yeah risk five is kind of shocking so this is uh, uh mr mr fox dog's favorite uh cpu architecture uh talks about it all the time in our discord channel to no avail but uh the box x86 guys they're uh they're working on it because you know you want to you want to make sure that you can run those x86 i'm just gonna, I'm just gonna stay right here because look at that gorgeous desktop perfection it xfce perfect Ugh. like there's there's no better Bomb way panel that chair the suitcase in the background a lamp you know stuff. full disclosure i have this monitor on this desk that's this this, uh, this, this, this type of that's monitor. one of the teeny tiny yeah, touch uh, monitors yeah. you, do you see the hole right there in the bottom right hand corner mm-hmm. ah. that's the power button no it's not that's where you stick it in there's a it's in the manual you stick a pin or a pencil through it and it operates as a kickstand 
That is hilarious. From the front? You push it through. You know, the pencil's going to be slightly uh, longer. There, 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 there's, right. The hole goes okay. all the yeah. way through. From the, <laughs> so right. from the front. Yeah. From the front to the back. Yeah, good stuff. Um, but yeah. <laughs> to the window, so, to the wall. <laughs> uh, but the uh, the Box 86 guys, uh, they're working on getting um, support running for Risk Five. They're using the uh, Vision 5 board, which runs a dual-core 1.5 gigahertz processor. It goes from about 2 to 8 gigs of memory, depending on your model. Apparently, this is one that Vision 5 sent to this guy, so we don't know how much memory it has. I would assume they probably gave him the best one, just to give it the best shot of success. But doesn't provide that information. Uh, the blog post is a very, very comprehensive breakdown of like how you map oh, this no. to risk instructions. That loading keeps going again. Let's get yeah. the head up about a minute. Uh, and <laughs> way, way, way above my head, they got it working. That's pretty cool. Uh, they, Whoa, they got no. stuff like uh, Stardew Valley up and running. Uh, they're saying, what, 63% uh, native for stuff like Open Arena, which is, again, pretty impressive considering it's a dual core 1.5 processor uh, with like what maybe maybe four to eight gigs of ram and it's got what the the onboard media processor has a uht 60 h265 and h264 decode and 1080p 30 h265 encode that doesn't tell you a lot about its capabilities but it like that's the most information we got about like what the gpu is capable of pushing i mean it's super impressive uh what it's able to do and yeah you're 100 right with that uh x86 64 programs uh they're they're running it all which was like okay that's neat. Good to see. And yeah, like right out of the gate, reasonable-ish speed. Uh, the open arena was doing 63% of native, which is like, what? That, that's, that's just like impressive, just straight up. Yeah. And 21.6, uh, 13.6. Uh, so yeah, that breaks down. And that's box 64 with that extension. This is going to be our future, our ARM-based future. And by the time... Risk based future, I guess. <laughs> in this case, risk. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, our arm, arm is also risk, so it's just brisk in general. We're get, we're moving we're moving away from complex instruction sets. Risk like V, I guess we should say. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. The, oh Jesus, hell! This is welcome. <sighs> Twenty years from now, Apple ARM PC Risk Five. That that's an interesting future. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and it's like you're welcome. I just spoke that well, into being. And, and, and what's <laughs> interesting, too, is like these projects will be like, oh, well, this is for your legacy software, right? Everything nowadays is natively compiled for ARM or for Risk Five or whatever. Risk Risk 12 is the new iteration. Yeah, you I just guess, have in, in that Block future. 64 or FX running on your risk v machine yeah you know you know i i i feel so i feel the need for some nostalgia based gaming i'm gonna boot up cyberpunk on my 256 core risk 5 thing yeah. i'm gonna run it in box 86 and have fun for yeah, no, i have my yeah. risk v phone and i'm just going to throw it on the desk and the monitors come on <laughs> yeah this, and you're gonna realize future, it's man. just tomorrow and that shit's gonna shatter and fall off the desk <laughs> No, well, it, well the, the downside is it comes in a giant pyramid, right? Like, we, we got we got rid of box 86, now it's pyramid 86. Do you skewer your phone on the pyramid? It yeah, sounds it's, it's a little like a bit crazy kebab. and a little bit sideways, but even a game like I like jaw-dropping to me was, like, the original Bayonetta, right? When did that game mm. come out? 2009? Yeah, 2009-ish. And today, uh, with, like, even a 20-series NVIDIA card, which is, what, two generations ago you can play that game under linux with proton at 4k 60 with everything jacked up like laughably and like there's no hit you know your cpu is not doing anything your gpu is like what is this so yeah 10 years from now what you what we're joking about very much going to be a reality Indeed. but let's let's go back in time my favorite to the stone age. kingdom the, the, yeah, no, it, it, it's called Stone Kingdoms, but it's very much Stone a medieval Edge. type of uh, setting. It's Stronghold, if you remember uh, the strategy game. Yeah, prehistoric cavemen. There's probably some T-Rexes in here. <laughs> yeah, it's zero, zero From eight. the early, early uh, 2000s. Uh, we talked about this previously. They only had a free build mode where you could just build your castle, and that was about it. Now they actually have a bit of a campaign going. Brewery, we can do micro brews, bro. Yeah, yeah. Pops, pops, <laughs> uh, they have uh, like ten or eleven new buildings that you can build. 
there's the aforementioned campaign mode, uh, and free build now has its Is own. Not somebody, uh, okay, we got the Fletcher, the Pull Turner, Blacks. Where's the Tanner? The, was the Tanner already implemented? I don't uh, know. I, I want a little <laughs> like I have to go around and I collect I think the Tanner piss. might have already been implemented, yes. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's in the church. They're tanning some little Oh, man, guys. you know what? You better not get sick. <laughs> yeah. The both carry nope. currently not functional. <laughs> dead mm-hmm. there's a lot of not functional if you just uh, install the game it's just it's built in love uh so you'll have to install love and then run the love file as usual but if you go into the options menu it there's a lot of uh this has not been implemented yet this has not been implemented yet ah well, okay. I, I mean, yeah, we're, I mean, we're, we haven't hit 1.0 yet. We're at not 0.5, but like it, it is, it is pretty sizable. They are, they are making good progress on this. Uh, yeah. Lots of new building types. The campaign mode, as Pedro mentioned, bug fixes, uh, including bug fixes for uh, arm based systems. If you're going to be running this on uh, an M1 or an M2, which mm-hmm. again, it's, it's the future. It's coming. We have, we have <laughs> games right now who are solving these problems so that engineers in the future don't need to do it again. I mean, you think about games from like 20 years ago. I mean, this looks better than Myth 2 did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. How's the online multiplayer? How's that working? Uh, I don't uh, think there is not. any online. This is available yeah. for Mac and ARM. Yes. Mac Linux, Mac, and ARM. Wait, what? Mm-hmm. Okay, and are we just doing ARM as uh... Uh, yeah, you, you, <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah. Because you have x86 and ARM on both of those operating systems? Win- Wintel, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I don't no, no, know. no support for Windows Arm though. It should, uh, uh, <laughs> RT. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right. All right. That, that does it. Coming up next, uh, fighting is magic. It and is. So and so is Skullgirls. Apparently, I don't know. Animal I'm jokes. Herds. Welcome back to the Chairquisition. This week, a fighting game that everyone has been waiting for for a very long time has come out. But fuck that shit, they didn't send us a copy of it, so we're throwing chairs at something else. This week we're taking a look at Them's Fighting Herds, developed by Main6 Entertainment. Developed on the Z Engine, Z Engine. Well, Civic, Civic ported it, so it's Z Engine, because he's a fellow Canadian, so we gotta say it properly. You can pick it up for about 20 bucks. Uh, what is it? Them's Fighting Herds is a 2D fighting game featuring a cast of adorable animals designed by acclaimed cartoon producer Lauren Faust. Beneath the cute and cuddly surface, a serious fighter awaits. We gotta thank Ven for buying us some keys for this game. Uh, you also picked the, you also picked the alpaca, huh? Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Uh, speak, speaking of Pedro, you can explain why while you give us your review. Yeah. Before we, we get started, some random bits of trivia. Yeah. The original name for the game was my little pony fighting is magic. And it featured the characters of the, my little po friendship is magic. Um, my little po, my brain got hung up on that, uh, but yeah. Uh, Lab Zero gave the uh, game engine to Main6 specifically for them's fight and herds because they very much liked what they saw and what they were trying to do. So very good. And uh, thank you again, Sibic, for the port. It, it does run out of the box. It works on the deck, but I ended up playing it on the desktop with the uh, USB Sega Saturn controller uh, for the simple reason that the game kept detecting extra directional inputs when I released a diagonal press or something. Ven's going to get into the, that a bit more. Uh, it's a little too sensitive. Uh, it's, uh, it sounds amazing. And the graphics are pretty good. Seriously, the, the graphics just actually look amazing. Uh, the, um, if those Latin mammals look familiar, it's because they were drawn by Lauren Foss, the, uh, MLP person. As for the fun, did you like Skullgirl or the Skullgirls? Are you okay with the idea of a uh, fluffer pundle bidding the shit out of Lady Murinicus the third? Uh, if you answered yes to either of those questions, first off, what's wrong with you? Second, uh, you'll probably like the idea of them's fighting herds. I say the idea of because much like Skellington gals, easy is a little too easy and medium is like hitting the proverbial brick wall on the difficulty curve. It, it yeah, there there doesn't seem to be an in betweeny point between the two, and I have no doubt that I could probably get good. I did beat the uh, single player story campaign in uh, Cranium Damsels on Nightmare difficulty with every character. And I only started to hate myself and literally everything else, including the game, when it took me several dozen tries to beat Fuqua with Philia. That that was a shit fight. 
but yeah, no, my one complaint is how sensitive the input detection is, and apparently that seems to be a bug with the Linux version. Not so much with the Windows one, but yeah, if I let go of the diagonal, the game registers another input in one of the two related directions, which is just enough of a window for the AI to skull fuck me with its hooves. Uh, it, it, yeah, if I had a bit more time, it probably would very much be a game that I could very well get into, but I don't, so three chairs. <laughs> All right. Uh, over here, man. Yeah. You launch it and... Pops right into the leftmost monitor, no matter what you have your primary set on. Not a big shock. Game scope right to the rescue. Completely sorts that out. Fighting games, uh, eSport title, man. So you fully expect 4K60 all day with my little 3060 NVIDIA card. Now, the gamepad straight up just has phantom inputs. I mean, it's not a sensitivity issue. Unless, I was talking about this in the pre-show, I reached over on the desk and I cut on my Xbox 360. And the reason I was able to reproduce this is because my batteries died and I had to put in some new batteries. And I picked it up. I didn't touch any buttons. I just grabbed the right corner of it and my character tore off to the right side of the screen. I had that happen twice. What did I do? I smashed that proton fun button. Done. Fixed it. No problems. No problems. So uh, multiplayer, it works. Jordan and I tried it out before the show. I was playing with Proton under Linux. You were playing on your Steam Deck. And yep. yep. Connected right up, uh, East Coast, East Coast, you know, Canada and Athens. Uh, we had like 53 milliseconds of latency. It didn't need to do any adjustments. It felt smooth. But let's talk about the fun. Now, this game was released back in 2020, and they just did a new update to it in April, 5.0. And I figured it's about time. Give this one a review. That, and it was absolutely on a great sell this weekend. Because this is one of those things like, that's yeah, kind of neat. I want to play around with it. It was like, I don't really want to spend like 20 bucks on a, like a little jokey game. I'm glad I did. I'm glad I did. Uh, Cause I grew up playing one V one fighting games, arcades later on home consoles. And then on some ass hat invented a combo system. And I just kind of noped out of games. Still enjoy watching them, especially competitive fighting. And I keep threatening to buy an arcade stick to see if my old ass can like get good in modern day and age, but hell, oh, combos. Combos aren't even my major gripe with modern fighting games these days, man. Mm -mm. It's story mode. Because I'm not ever going to understand the desire to put a story mode in a fighting game. It's like putting plot in a porno, man. Like, somebody must like it, because it keeps showing up. Even the new Street Fighter VI has an overworld with story RPG elements. Okay. Anyway, this one does have the overworld, but it's a uh, pixelated BS thing. You can just skip right to it and get to the fighting in your fighting game. Who would have thought about that? Now, um, where was I at? Oh, right. When you get to the fighting, it's your standard fare. You know, you got training modes, easy to get to your move list, getting up, uh, it goes through a couple of tutorials teaching you combos, defense, and all that. I like that. That's pretty decent. Uh, it's really easy to get to your moves list. That's kind of important. And it's not overkill with the moves. And you remember last week? It might have been a week before last. When I mentioned some games always maintain that core group of online players. This is no exception. This game from 2020, it's not necessarily an old game, but there's basically one server in the U EU with about 20 players. And that's what they do. They play fighting herds. You walk in there, you will get insta-killed. Fair warning. Uh, and if you plan on playing like by yourself, forever alone mode, it's going to be against the AI. And the AI can be a wee on the cheaty side, especially on level two difficulty. Now, that's really jarring because on level one difficulty, you can kind of get away with like semi-educated button mashing and you can still cut through it. And, you know, there's plenty of characters to choose from. I ended up playing not DJ, who's, uh, are you on the left side on this one, Pedro? I am the alpaca. Oh, you're the alpaca. Okay. So I, I was playing Shanty. Donkey. Yeah, Shanty. not DJ. And uh, had a good time with that. Had a good time with that. Uh, reasonable moves, less combos. Okay, you got basically three buttons to play with, plus a magic button modifier. Easy to keep track of. So you got four buttons for your fighting mechanic. And everything was manageable, even your little magic meter at the bottom. There's like a billion things to balance out and keep track big fan of that and you know since the my little brony things kind of passed over you got to judge this 
as just a fighting game in 2023. And on that merit alone, yeah, it's solid. I like it. It's a solid little fighting game. It's easy to pick up. And of course, you know, ZoMG ponies, right? But you do want to keep in mind that if you're going to be doing, looking for that competitive online uh, aspect, you're going to have to bring a friend unless you just want to trial by fire, right? So, yeah, at the end of the day, even at 20 bucks, it's well done. I think it's a little slower than Skullgirls. And for me, that's a good thing. You know, it's, it's not quite as unhinged and not quite as haywire. So if you're, if you're looking for combos with some training wheels, this is good. And plus you get to play as these psychotic, murderous uh, ponies. Yeah, three chairs. Jordan? Yeah, so on uh, Fedora 3764-bit with the R9 3900X GTX 1080 guy, launches out of the box. Uh, it, yeah, it really likes that leftmost monitor. And you can, like, de-full screen it and drag it to another window and re-full screen it, and that's happy. But if you restart the game, it's back to the left-hand side. Uh, so, yeah. Um, yeah, that movement is sensitive. At first, I, you can go back to the pre-pre-super session where I had a discussion with Ven where I'm like, yeah, I think maybe this game's input is just, like, demanding a level of, like, physical fidelity that I'm just not capable of and he's like no no phantom inputs switch to proton and i'm like oh okay so um that that and that was like kind of my major gripe is the and yeah, to put a better point on it, like that the overworld platform jumping shit yeah is as easy as you would think it was supposed to be once you're in proton okay because like that that was the thing i tried doing the story mode with the with the stock controls and it's like man i cannot do any of these jumps i'm moving too fast blah 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 and yeah, at, at about that point, I tapped out. And yeah, apparently, if you just switch to Proton, then these input issues go away. And I probably would have had a better time than I did, but I didn't. So, um, but, uh, the, like, the, yeah, uh, I've, I don't know. Based on that, I felt kind of to me like this is really meant to be played with a fight stick. Some of the, some of the gamepad controls, especially for the platforming, was a little awkward. Maybe with Proton, it's a bit better. I don't know. The multiplayer is nicely integrated. Everything works out of the box. You can connect to po people. No issues. Um, you get the uh, GGPO uh, latency slider, so you can adjust things if you are in a poor network condition. That's all good. And yeah, like Pedro said, the art style is really, really good. Like, all the character designs are, like, super distinct. All their move sets, like, really do a good job of getting... Um, getting their their like gimmicks and their personality and their whole their whole shtick across i liked it um fun wise though like i don't know filing the fan uh fan works filing the serial numbers off of things and then selling the new thing has an interesting track record of su success let's look at 50 shades of gray for example i bring this up mainly because this is pretty much my little pony Skullgirls, as previously mentioned to a fault did you like ultra percent com the ultra percent comboing and guilty gear style anime fighter that was skull rolls you'll probably get a kick out of this are, conversely, are you a brony or a pegasus who wants to sink their teeth into a fighting game relevant to your interests? This might be a reality. I, however, am neither of these people. So my ability to comment on the quality of this game is minimal. Um, as I said, the character design is spot on. The sound design is good. Um, yeah, I just am not good at uh, comboing when it comes to uh, games that input like phantom inputs. Uh, so I, I was I was I was happy to get my 1.5 wins against Ven. Uh, that was, that was, that was good enough for me. Uh, but I, I mean, like, I, I don't know there, I've, I've definitely had more fun playing different fighting games, but this isn't a bad one. Um, I think, I think there's definitely potential here. If you are someone who's into the style of fighting game, there's nothing technically wrong with this aside from the phantom inputs, which is a very easy fix. Yeah. Uh, solid. I'll give it two cheers. All right. Uh, they're still updating it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh that was like one of the things i noticed and like these are big chunky updates like the 5.0 patch mm -hmm. was still big and i i wish there were more people playing this because I, I with a game like this i'm only going to have a good time if i'm in a situation where it's like me and jordan mm. or like me and pedro like have you ever played this like nope are you really good at fighting games like yeah and that's yeah, what I'm you, looking for. That that's the fun, like learning together and playing around. You know, where there's at least a fifty fifty chance it could go either way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and and I think like fight, fighting games especially are bad for that because like there it like it is such a skill based game that like once once someone gets like a good amount ahead of like your friends, 
it's 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 kind of bullshit everyone has had that one friend at a party who's just like i respect you too much to go easy on you and it's like well i'm not having fun then so i'm just not gonna play with you fuck you <laughs> and it's usually the person who owned the game who put in the time to unlock all the characters make sure they could have their friends around so they could play with whatever character they like the look of the best and yeah you, then you're that guy so. then you go easy and then the motherfucker screams at you for taking it easy on them because they want some real competition <laughs> then you well, wreck you, their ass then yeah. they get angry at you more mm-hmm. well there, there, there's a gradient you gotta like slip people into this i think and I i'm think- like i'm not your fucking hand holder man like do you or do you not like i'll take it easy and fuck around casually play with you or like this is like a yes or no type thing i can't like yeah. read your minds yeah, I, I want I want casual fuck around play type. I don't want I don't want to have to get good. I don't have time for that shit. But uh, yeah, and I, and I think that that's kind of like the the long intro to this game. If you have time to get good at this shit, then you're probably gonna have oh, a yeah. blast with it. Um, <laughs> there are I wish it's like uh, back to I just wish more people were playing it. And you know it was on sale this past weekend. It was like ten eleven bucks or whatever it was when I bought it. And mm. Like, yeah, it's definitely worth that. I, I don't know if I can necessarily recommend 20 bucks, considering the AI is a little bit all over the place. Even if you go to their uh, forums right now, you'll still see people talking about mm. problems with the AI. And um, what is this? Here, here's a very good example of, um, since I have no friends and I'm not uh, too keen on getting my ass handed <laughs> to me by these seven people that do online matchmaking. <laughs> I'm essentially stuck fighting the CPU. So yeah, and they they go into talking about like, hey, you know, AI is real tricky to mm. get right, but mm, yeah, because, yeah, no, the, there's there's got to be a middle point because easy mode is way too easy, and medium mode, you can see it right now. I'm about to get my ass kicked very yeah. very badly. <laughs> Apparently, so, like level two is the special breed of difficulty. Le- yeah, it, le- level level two is where they actually know how to combo, and you don't. So <laughs> there's gotta be a midpoint in there somewhere. <laughs> All, right. All maybe, right, maybe maybe that's for the six patch. So I think that's gonna do it for L Cherquisition. Coming up next, have your saves been deleted? Well, it's too late now to help you, but we have a tool that'll stop you from running into that in the future. You can finally, finally put this episode of Linux Gamecast to rest. Yes, there's just one teeny tiny little bit of hate mail on my expense, but you know, whatever. Um, the the way that you can send some hate mail our way is to leave a comment on the YouTube video. Probably we'll see it. Leave a comment on the Patreon post. We'll definitely see that one. The... <laughs> recommended way though is if you go to linuxgamecast.com you hit the contact button there's a form you gotta fill Uh, there's some caveats at the top if you don't read those and your mail message uh promotional material doesn't reach us mail message mail slash message slash promotional material yes Mm Uh, it's, uh, yeah, if that doesn't reach us, that's very much on you. So make sure you pick LGC weekly as the topic and the rest is fairly self-explanatory. Yeah. No, no one pays attention to that. No, <laughs> Clearly I mean, I mean, not. <laughs> we, we try to make it as evasive as possible. Unless uh, your but, name's Daniel. Yeah. He's trying to make it as, as safe as, as sa- safe mm-hmm. as, as possible. He says, I have recently found a tool that can mass backup slash restore game saves called Ludo Savvy. I was listening to episode 558 and heard that a game save was lost. Maybe this tool could have been used to prevent that. This is also very handy to transferring non-cloud saves between devices. I have lost so many game saves to not backing up when reinstalling Windows and Linux in the past. So this tool should help me never lose a save again. Yeah, that uh, if you uh, watch the completely uncut uh, episode 558, uh, I mentioned Ludo Savvy in one of the intermissions, but yeah, I didn't actually mention it on the show. So thank you. Thank we you very much. Uncut versions <laughs> of the podcast. Yes. <laughs> Which you can listen to like four hours uninterrupted. <laughs> and yeah, no, the Ludo Savvy is actually really, really nice. Uh, you launch it the first time and it goes through your entire storage to try and find games oh, that it recognizes. Do I need to have like WSL installed? 
Uh, no, it works natively on uh, Windows and on Windows. Why does, I suppose. It, why does it need open gel? Open gel, yes, thank you. I was uh, immediately going to click how. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's a little odd. Uh, um, uh, GPU acceleration for the uh, pretty <laughs> effects. I don't know. GPU accelerated <laughs> progress <laughs> bars. Like, I, I don't know. Is there a, is there a build instruction? What's well, play night? Uh, play night. Uh, I a plugin to backup your save data using. Oh, is it for the Steam Deck? I th I, th I think um, I think like Lud Ludu Savvy is a, is a project that does this, and then mm -hmm. this is the thing that implements Ludu. This Savvy. is the thing. But yes, you can download just Ludu Savvy, build it, uh, or just download the uh, pre-built um, Linux executable. It works. It works really, really well. Uh, I have set it up as a cron job to run every day at four p.m. because that's usually when work ends. So it's like okay. These saves are uh, still accurate as of uh, last night, so anything I play today, at most I lose one day's worth of gaming, which in my case tends to be like an hour or two during the week, at most. So, yeah. <laughs> hmm. So what you're telling me is uh, make sure that if you're a developer, enable cloud saves. Yes, please! Enable cloud I... saves and don't fuck people's cloud this, saves. Uh... About Darkest Dungeon 2. I was like, I'm going to play this on the Steam Deck and like have fun on the toilet. And they're like, no, fuck you. No cloud saves for you. Well, mm. we're, we're looking at adding it later. I'm like, but, but, but why? How do you just not launch that? And, and here's another thing that you got to check for now, which, like it or not, this is a very real use case. Let's say you got a Steam Deck and you get a desktop. You're running the Proton version on your desktop because for whatever reason, it doesn't want to run the native version. But like maybe you're running the native version on your Steam Deck. And by default, your cloud saves do not sync a lot of times between those two versions. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm sure every one of us has been bitten by that. Like, you got to save, then you're like, okay, let me switch over to Proton, check some, oh, got to start back at the beginning, huh? Yeah. yeah. It's, 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 <laughs> it's definitely gotten a lot better, but, like, you still run into that, and it sucks, like, every time. Every, every time. No good. So this is going to be the best way to get everything backed up and saved up and upped up with your OpenGL. Yep. It still... has some integration. If you have our cloud, it, you can do just cloud saves with Ludo Savvy directly. Uh, otherwise, you could just save them locally or to a network share, which, again, works really well. And it uh, pulls all the save game information from PC Gaming Wiki. So everything that's on the PC Gaming Wiki, it will find on your computer and just back up those saves <laughs> here here here's just a here's just a dumb thought that popped into my head does it make sense for like games to have google drive integration so you can just hook up your google account and then have it just post your save to your google drive and then on every other platform you can just log back into google and pull the save is that a dumb idea no it's not but that would own okay it, it's a it, unfortunately it's like that's not a dumb idea because people don't use the built-in uh, steam cloud save mm-hmm if everyone did that, I'd be like, that's a bit excessive, but like, that would be a good universal, like, yeah, d kind, of, kind of just like bypass the distribution method. Cause mm -hmm. like, or like, it, and it doesn't have to be drive. It could be, you could just like have like one cloud or, or yeah, just uh, or, give people an option to with a bunch of different ones, like yeah. next cloud, Google drive, one drive for windows. Yeah. Yeah. And I think like one of the, cool, oh, something we do want to mention. This is a uh, Ludus heavy is available on dun, 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 flat up. Hey. Yep. So you do not have to learn how to compile Rust. <laughs> and you don't have to. Uh, you can just download the native uh, binary already built from the GitHub page. So <laughs> For wine prefix? Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, I got it. I, I was thinking like Flatpak is going to make it really easy to get up and running on your uh, Steam Deck, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it is on Discover, so. Oh, neat. What does this come available to... Uh, why wait? Why is there a legal version? <laughs> That's the legal documentation. Oh, okay. <laughs> please, please, please do not sue us. Right. Uh, Linux Mac one thirty two one sixty four. Okay. Yep. Good job. It is a zip, so remember to ch mod it. Nope. Uh, -uh. I'm just gonna write. <laughs> I'm gonna file an issue.
Like it did not work. I double clicked on this thing all well, evening. I, I downloaded the HTML page and it's not extracting. Right? Yeah, I right click saved as and I changed the file uh, extension. Mm-hmm. <laughs> ah, you can't make this up. <laughs> Thanks for writing into the show, Danny. That's uh, it's good to know stuff like that because you know Pedro might have mentioned it there, but like it, it skips our minds sometimes. I'm like, yep. oh right, probably should have brought that up. Now we have. Thanks to you, but. We need to roll out of here, everybody. So, transform, roll out. Roll in. Is anybody excited about Beast Wars? You know, I, I forgot I, that was the, the yeah. I, you, you know, what? I'll, I'll, I'll watch it when it's when it's available. I don't have to like go outside to a theater to watch it. I liked Beast Wars. I want to see what a robot gorilla does. All right. On that bombshell, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to get in touch. With old man Ven at Venstone on Twitter at Ven on our federated timeline mass.linuxemcast.com. I'm active doing the things there. As always, if you are a patron or a Twitch subscriber, hop in our Discord. I'm easy to get a hold to. Somebody at replied me during the show, didn't they? Irritant. <laughs> I'll, I'll definitely be getting back to you on that. Well, unfortunately, I'm not a robot gorilla. I am merely a flesh gorilla. Name Jordan. You can find me on Twitter at the Burning Fool, on Mastodon at Frojo at mass.lindersgamecast.com, or on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Burning Fool. And you can find me actively uh, hating on and disparaging Mastodon at uh, an accounted four with the actual number. Boiling four yourself up. At- <laughs> ripping your shirt off. Mastodon Linux We're games. Going back to MySpace. <laughs> Uh, mass.linuxgamecast.com or on Twitter where I never even mentioned Mastodon because let's face it, I don't go there very often. That's uh, unaccounted for (laughs) F-O-U-R. Ladies and gentlemen, prepare yourself for it is time for the credits. Yes. An orchard. Was there fortune? (laughs) May the fortune be with you. Well, that that's it. We're 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 done. We gotta thank our executive oh, producer, shit, our like advisors, how you, right? Our you getting old, Steve. Third. Rohit beat you. Yeah, and we got our executive producers here. They are <laughs> they are Barb Bram, Scott Machado, Tomacast, Mike G, Drummer, Kahaku Pebble, Tomash, Hakeem, David, yes. And then the uh, those assholes, Super Death Stoke, Empty, Glorious Segrol, and Blasphemia for Game Boy Color. We get plenty of sea monsters because they need about to refit it. Renault, Rider X, Makita, Truggy, Verifuna, Justin, Nubbin, Darkwing, System T, DSN, Joe, Ogiwan, and of course, K. Rarolo. <laughs> to Death Notes, Nova, Basil, Chad, Romeo, Marcin, Renee, Leonardo, Kresny, Kim, Chris, Stephen, Jill, Benjamin, Doom 2.Watt, Stephen B, Dirty Dean, Back, Game of Tron, Dodger, Zetheris Gaming, Rue, Turnover, M. Fox Dog, Svein, Oil of Hope, Jalu, so Piper, tiny. and Aromatic Death. Little bits, little credits, <laughs> and all of the chairlings that make this possible. Steve, I'm going to say this one last time. The only credit currency we acknowledge is Zinnies on the show. <laughs> Your credits are no good here. You imp- and imperial big thank scum. you to um, mm. In It's Six and Graph and Euthanasia. Y'all, and the re- most recent uh, Patreons. And these fuckers, I, ah, no, no, no Kai at the end, but he's there on the board, no, which is the there. important thing. Is he? No, is he's in there? there. He's just not at the very last line. He's yeah. just ah. a little bit above him. He, he happened to... He, you, you end up normally wherever that cursor is. Got it. <laughs> where, 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 where it lands. It might be at the top of the list. It might be at the bottom. Round and round we go. Dying of fire, everyone. We'll see you next week. Toodles. Doodly do out of musical sync. Very difficult to do because I want to do it right. Five dudes. <laughs>